Sunday marks the 56th anniversary of the Apollo, Apollo 11 mission. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were the first humans to walk on the lunar surface. And now NASA is in a multi-year effort to return astronauts to the moon starting in 2026 with an eye toward a crewed mission to Mars in the 2030s. So what do Americans really think about those efforts? Is it worth it or not? Anthony Salvanto takes one small step into the data for this week's America Unfiltered. We have so many problems here on Earth that still need attention, poverty, healthcare, education. If the money's not going back to taxpayers, it should be improving life down here. I think the scientific knowledge is going to benefit humanity. Going to space, is a great luxury, but we can't afford to do that right now. I believe landing on Mars is definitely the next logical step. We have global warming and trying to avoid World War III and a whole bunch of other enormous issues that should take priority over spending money on space exploration, in my opinion. We'll blast off here with this poll finding two thirds saying they would favor the U.S. sending astronauts back to the moon and just as many even on to Mars. In fact, one thing I noticed was that while there was majority support from all age groups, it was young people who were the most supportive about going to Mars, maybe very future looking part of it there. And what I want to do now is bring in two of our poll respondents, Jane and Ravindra, to tell us more about why they see space and space exploration as beneficial. Jane, I want to start with you. You told us you recall the moon landing back in 69. What do you remember about it? Where were you? How did it make you feel? Um, in 1969, I was 10 years old, and my older sister was 19 years old. I remember we were sitting with her and watching the moon landing, and she suggested that we stand on our heads and watch it and saying that we would be the only people in the country probably watching the moon landing while standing on our heads. And then after that was finished, we went outside and we looked at the real moon, which was up in the sky. And it was pretty amazing to look at the moon and think that there were people walking on it as we were looking at it. What do you say to people who say, well, this is a distraction. This is too much money spent on something. We've got a lot of problems here on earth to solve instead. But I think it's still a worthwhile goal to explore. A, you know, it gives us a hope and it's for a lot of innovation. And, you know, things we take for granted like GPS and even our microwave oven, everybody uses every minute in the kitchen. A lot of those things, which are obviously are practical and in everyday use, were invented for the moon landing and space exploration. Jane, let me ask you, if you could go on a rocket to the moon, if you could go to a moon colony, if one gets built, would you go? Um, yes, but probably not in the first rocket. <laughs> <laughs> and Ravindra, how about you? Would you go? I think I will go, you know, on the first rocket. Turns out most Americans today in our polling think that the space program contributes at least some to scientific advances that most Americans can use. At least some. Some think a lot, but not everyone. And that leads to our next two guests, who might emphasize other priorities instead of the space program. We're joined now by Brooke and Lee to discuss more. So let me start with you, Brooke. Tell me. Is this the right priority, going in space, going back to the moon, going back, going to Mars? I'm always thinking about our priorities as a society, especially when so many people around me are struggling just to meet basic needs. So when it comes to space exploration, I'm personally against it. It for now, I don't think it should be off the table forever, but right now there are just too many urgent issues we're failing to address, things like poverty, education, health care, and support for disabled people. So, Lee, let me ask you, when you hear people say, well, the space program will bring scientific mm -hmm. advances that maybe we can use to address some of the issues that you raise there, what do you say to them, and how do you see it differently? When I was younger, 
I watched all the space landings and the moon landings and all that, which was very exciting at the time. But again, there are so many things going on in the world at the moment that I think should take priority over the exploration of space right now. So if it ever came up that you could go to, let's say they build a moon colony and you could take a trip there, let me ask each of you, Brooke, would you go? Um, I'm not really a big vacation person, so I'd probably say no, because I only like going on trips where there's like meaning behind them. And Lee, what about you? Would you go? No. <laughs> Why not? I don't even like I don't I don't even like to fly. So <laughs> I haven't been in a plane in about twenty years, so uh, no. But thank you. That's great. Well, I want to thank you both again for sharing those insights and those experiences and views with us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for joining us on America Unfiltered. One common theme that came up throughout our interviews was the sense of potentially national pride coming from the space program, whether it was through American achievement or a call for unity, something everyone could agree on as part of humanity. Well, there's where the poll numbers stand. I'm not sure they'll need a pollster on any future moon colony. So for now, here on Earth, Thanks for watching America Unfiltered. I'm Anthony Salvant. Thanks so much, Anthony, for that. Well, do you want to have your voice heard on America Unfiltered? We're looking for viewers from across the country just like you to weigh in on upcoming topics. Just scan the QR code there on your screen or visit cbsnews.com forward slash America Unfiltered.